David Reeves. I like to think that he's the new Ken Ham or Kent Hovind, even though his name doesn't start with a K. Now, I know these videos of his that I'm responding to now are a little bit older, but I still think that these little bits of anti-science are still worth taking a look at. So let's talk about dinosaurs. Can I be a Bible-believing Christian and believe in dinosaurs? You know, the kind of dinosaurs we see in the movies? Right, you know, those scary ones that lived millions of years ago. They killed everything in sight and then inexplicably turned into birds after all dying in a meteor explosion. It's not inexplicable. We have explanations for it. Explanations which people like you will readily reject without completely understanding it. It wasn't magic and it wasn't sudden. It was a small change after a small change for an immensely long period of time. And there's plenty of evidence for it. And they didn't all die in a meteor explosion. Yes, there was a mass extinction event that was caused by a meteor impact, but that didn't cause every species of dinosaur to go extinct, just a lot of them and a lot of other organisms. It was a catastrophe, but it wasn't magic that targeted the dinosaurs and only the dinosaurs. I know this may be simple stuff that I'm explaining right now, but creationists like David here don't always have a very nuanced view of uh, archaeology, science, pretty much anything that disagrees with them. Well, maybe not those. You see, some of that is fiction. I've been on paleontological digs and I've dug up the bones of these monsters that you see in the movies. They were real. Here he says that he's been on paleontological digs, and maybe he has, I don't know. But make no mistake, he's not a paleontologist. No paleontologist would say the things that he's saying. And his ministry's website says that he has documented field experience in paleontology. But I don't know where the hell this is documented. I mean, in this video, he claims that he's been on two paleontological digs in Kansas where he found clams or something, but that's just about it. Oh wait, I see, I get it now. It says here that his exciting life and world travels are documented on his ministry's Facebook page. So I guess he's a Facebook scientist. Let's continue. There's a few things that we hear about these creatures that are not based on fact. So let's see if I can go over a few. Number one, when I dig up the bones, I've never yet found a date stamped on one saying deposited 65 million years BC. And here you show just how unscientific you are. Sure, there's no literal timestamp, but you can't be ignorant of the fact that we do have methods of dating fossils. You're trying to make yourself seem like a scientist by saying, oh, I go on to paleontological digs. I dig up these bones myself. But anybody that actually knows what they're talking about would understand radiometric dating. In fact, What's getting a lot of attention within the scientific community these days is the discovery of soft tissue inside some of these bones. Now this soft tissue should not even last for 100,000 years, much less the millions required for evolution. What makes you think that this can't last millions of years under any circumstances? I mean, are we going to make observations and form tests to try to see what's going on? Or are we just going to jump to conclusions based on our bias? He elaborates a bit more in this video. Now, all of these examples of soft tissue are conventionally dated at tens to hundreds of millions of years old. And yet observational science tells us that soft tissue can't last that long. You still have to fight with chemistry. Scientists have conducted reliable, repeatable experiments to figure out just how long soft tissues will last. And the results aren't good for those who believe in millions of years. Although they have only had a few years to run the test, they're already running into big problems. They can't adequately explain how these proteins could last for more than thousands of years. Now, research shows that soft tissue can't last even one million years, let alone tens to hundreds of millions of years. But this same research shows that soft tissues can certainly last a few thousand years. That would be consistent with the biblical dates for the global flood described in Genesis. Breaking new evidence doesn't confirm a secular timeline. It confirms a biblical timeline. I'm David Reeves. Truly, the heavens declare the glory of God. And where are your citations for any of this research? What makes you think that there's absolutely no possible way for soft tissue to be preserved? Had they tested every possible explanation? 
and this distinction between historical science and observational science. This is a distinction that no actual genuine scientist would ever make. This is just another kind of convoluted way in which creationists will readily dismiss and ignore all of the evidence that goes against their crazy ideas. And since I guess I'm gonna have to be the one that actually uses science, here is a scientific journal article that, and I quote, shows empirically that structure-function relationships at the molecular level could contribute to selective preservation in fossilized vertebrate remains across geological time. And further, here is an article explaining that chelators from iron is a probable explanation as to how it was preserved for so long, and gave an experiment that showed that this does work with ostrich blood. So according to actual science, soft tissue can be preserved for millions of years. And in case you don't get the point yet, if ever we can't explain something in science, then instead of just jumping to wild conclusions that we already made beforehand, we make more observations and we make tests and experiments and try to find out what's going on. That's how science actually works. Now number two, while we know that dinosaurs really did eat other animals because we sometimes find these other creatures in their stomachs, it doesn't mean that they were ferocious creatures. In fact, sperm whales and warthogs and other creatures have long, sharp teeth that look remarkably similar to the T-Rex, but they aren't carnivorous killing machines. Okay, so you still probably wouldn't have wanted a pair of velociraptors as pets, but trying to describe their behavior from a bunch of bones takes quite a bit of speculation. This is kinda true. We don't know exactly how all dinosaurs behaved, and for movies and stuff, we definitely do have to take some liberties. But what we find can tell us a good deal about how they behaved. I think what he's trying to get at is that everyone, including scientists, maybe, they just make huge assumptions and guesses without the facts to back it up, but that's not really how it works. I mean, hell, as far as the T-Rex goes, you gave us the evidence yourself. Teeth and the animals in their stomachs. Teeth can tell us a lot about how an animal behaves and their diet, regardless of how similar you think they look to other animals, Mr. Not-A-Real-Paleontologist. And it's not just what one tooth looks like, it's about the structure of all of the teeth together as a whole. I mean, take the warthog for example, sure the tusks are scary and they are used for defense, but their molars are pretty big and flat, indicating their omnivorous diet. But on the other hand, the T-Rex, all of their teeth are sharp, indicating their carnivorous diet. But did you know that on the warthog, it's the bottom set of tusks that are dangerous, the one on its bottom jaw? And that's because the bottom and top tusks actually hit each other every time that the warthog closes its mouth. And that actually constantly sharpens the bottom set of tusks, keeping it razor sharp all the time. You see, that's the kind of detail that we would be able to figure out about the warthog even if all that we knew about the warthog is what we could infer from the skeleton. We could tell by their teeth that they are omnivorous, so they wouldn't have attacked you for food, but with their tusks, you'd be able to tell that they were probably really defensive. Defensive of themselves and maybe their young. And that wouldn't be speculation, that's inferring. Also, a few things that I forgot to mention here. We found bite marks on skeletons of other dinosaurs, and those bite marks match up to the teeth of tyrannosaurs. And, of course, not every dinosaur is a carnivore. Not every dinosaur is a predator. There are plenty of herbivorous dinosaurs, there are plenty of peaceful ones, and there are plenty of, well, predators. So, number three, you might have heard that the last dinos went extinct millions of years ago, but dating methods show huge discrepancies in the alleged ages of dinosaur remains. There's something going on here. Recently, a dozen carefully collected and preserved samples of fossils and dinosaur remains were sent in for testing. Now, measurable amounts of carbon-14 were found in every single one. The maximum limit for C14 is about 80 to 100,000 years. Maximum. The current evolutionary theories need at least 50 million years for dinosaurs. 
So maybe it's time for a reevaluation. All right, cool. And where's your citation for this study? None? No, don't have one? No citation? <sighs> All right, fine. I guess I'll go looking for this study on my own, but you're really not making this easy for me. Okay, so the closest thing that I could find was this study, if you could call it that. It's not actually an article, but a presentation, I guess? They claim that they went all across the country, as well as to Asia and to Europe, dug up some dinosaur bones, dug up some coal, and dug up some diamonds. They dated all of them, compared the dates, and found that there was enough carbon-14 in the dinosaur bones to date them between 22,000 and 40,000 years old, younger than all of the rest of the materials dated. Okay. Let's ignore the fact that they knew that carbon dating is unreliable for anything older than around 50,000 years or so, and then decided to use this unreliable method anyway. Instead, let's look at what they didn't do. As far as I can tell, they gave no explanation as to how they determined that these fossils were from Jurassic or Cretaceous animals. They didn't use any other method of dating, which could have given them an older date, and they didn't date anything around the fossils or check for index fossils, again, as far as I can tell. But even if these actually are dinosaur bones, which they very well may be, I don't really know, the results mean nothing, and that's because you can only radiocarbon date organic material, that is, material that has carbon in it. Now, I hear what you're saying from across the screen. You're saying, heath, but bones are organic material, and yeah, you're right, but fossils are not bones. But instead, they were bones, but they have since been petrified, or turned into rocks. See, the bones actually do decay, go away, melt, I don't know, but there are minerals that are coming in and replacing that bone. So what you have are no longer bone, but instead rocks that have replaced the bone. And these minerals are not organic, and you cannot radiocarbon date them. And sure, you may find trace amounts of carbon-14, but that's because carbon-14 is everywhere, and they can come into pretty much anything from a number of ways, not the least of which is contamination. So yeah, you can find carbon-14 in fossils and in pretty much everything else. See, we don't claim that there's no carbon-14 in anything that's too old, just that there's not enough to reliably date it using this method. And to top it all off, these bogus dates between 22,000 and 40,000 years ago don't even fit within their timeline, where they think that the Earth is only around 6,000 years old. I've seen a number of creationist studies that do this exact same thing, and of course get similar results, but they're never published in an actually reputable journal, because any peer-reviewed reputable journal would know just how ridiculous this is. In fact, this presentation was quickly taken down from the university's website, and rightfully so. It reads a lot more like an elaborate piece of creationist propaganda than an actual scientific article. I mean, they even claimed, casually, that they found human-like footprints alongside dinosaur footprints. It's, it's ridiculous. So are dinosaurs real? Sure they're real. They're even found in the Bible. But dinosaur is a recent word, and until modern day, most people call dinosaurs dragons. And now, who's making a lot of speculation? Dinosaur means terrible lizard, and while they certainly were very large lizards, we don't know how terrible they actually were. But they must have been a sight to behold. Okay, you want to talk about misconceptions. Dinosaurs weren't lizards or reptilian at all. In fact, they're more closely related to modern birds. They even had feathers, as we can tell by a number of fossils, not to mention the numerous transitional fossils between birds and dinosaurs. But I digress. We often think of the term dinosaur as meaning prehistoric or ancient, but there are accounts all around the world of people fighting huge, terrible lizards and dragons. I mean, think of medieval legends and Chinese symbolism. 
Okay, I thought about them, and their descriptions and depictions of dragons don't match any fossils of dinosaurs that we have. And, you know, they never wrote about a, a brontosaur or a triceratops. So, it turns out dragons are just myths and legends. Who knew? Maybe there's more to the story than we're being told in schools. Maybe the children's stories and fairy tales about these dinosaurs living 65 million years ago are just that fairy tales. Oh, the irony. If you take the Bible literally, as many creationists do, then you believe that God created the world in six days. You believe that he flooded the entire world over. You believe that languages come from when men just made a tower that was a little too tall, a little too close to heaven. You believe in giants. You believe in the undead. You believe that God became a man and walked among us to give us a message. You believe all of these literal myths, and you have the audacity to call scientific findings fairy tales. Sure, 